Hello, I'm back and I also wanted to show you something about bees today. Um, I've got my magazine here all about wildlife. It's actually from Wildlife in North Carolina uh, magazine. And there's an article here all about bees. You know, we often think of, of the honeybee uh, as a bee and they are definitely in danger. Many are dying. It's, it's, it doesn't look good for the honeybee. But because of that, what a lot of people don't realize is there are many other native species of bees right here in our state. In fact, the honeybee isn't actually originally native, uh, but has become, we've become very dependent upon the, the honeybee. It's important that we protect the honeybee. But look at all these other bees that, that are here, not the least of which is the bumblebee that you'll see there, but there are actually six other uh, uh, or more, at least six other um, native bees. That is an option. If we can help preserve them, we can um, preserve uh, a lot of other things, like food and plants and everything else that need to be pollinated. If we were to lose the honeybee, we definitely, we need to hop on these other species. And it was a really interesting article about native bee uh, pollinators. In fact, I'd like to give you a closer look. So if I may look right, look. The article is called Native Bee Pollinators, creating or creating a buzz for uh, native bee pollinators. And you can see there's a picture of a bumblebee right there. And it says that it's an Eastern uh, bumblebee, very common. A pollinator. And he's, he's capable of carrying hefty amounts of pollen, pollen or she, usually. And then look, we've got a picture there. This is actually a sweat bee on this black-eyed Susan, the flower there. And then over here, we actually have what's called a leaf cutter bee. You can see, look, it does that to plant another kind of bee in North Carolina. In fact, there's there are some others. There's there's the uh, let me show you some pictures. Look, there's the bumblebee. There's the carpenter bee. There's the cuckoo bee. There's the leaf cutter bee. And I know that view and that other picture looked different because it was a head-on view and you could see the I guess, face or whatever better. Sunflower bee and the sweat bee. We're gonna talk about just a few of these today and the different and what's being done to uh, protect and utilize these pollinators and different projects that are going on in North Carolina. I won't necessarily mention all those, but oh, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of these bees. There is something called a mason and leaf cutter, leaf cutter bees. And they're commonly found across North Carolina. They're solitary bees. They nest in hollow stems or rotting wood. And the term uh, mega means large lipped and like the references, they're hefty mandibles where they, where they move their mouth with. Leaf cutter bees, they need strong jaws to clip these leaves. And what they do is they line their multi-chambered nests with those chewed up parts. There. They're made from pollen and nectar and they seal the chamber with chewed up leaves. The developing young will feast on the protein and carbohydrate rich pollen ball for several weeks. And then over winter, as the pre pupa inside their cocoons. In the spring, they will rapidly complete development and emerge from their individual chambers. Then we have something called the mason bees, uh, which I mentioned before. They have similar nests, but use mud or leaf pulp walls. So first we have got leaf cutter and mason bees. 
and they separate their chambers with these chewed up bits. And uh, they even, actually the mason bees, the female secretes a unique scent at the entrance of the tunnel that helps her find the corresponding entrance and she can find where the entrance is to the nest. Now on the flip side, mining bees. Remember the mining bees? See, did we find one there? There wasn't a picture there of that one. But that's another kind of bee. Uh, they nest in the ground. And some nest an inch below the surface while others dig down a foot. In the western parts of the country, there is a record of a mining bee that dug nine feet underground. Have you ever seen a bee in the ground, had a hole just in the ground? Mining bees do that. And although they're solitary nesters, mining bees may form large colonies in the ground. I, I don't want to use the word colony um, because that has another meaning, but there may be several nests in the ground, even though the chambers may be separate. Mining bees are often the first to emerge on warm days in the spring. So if you're walking along a sandy area, you may find bees in the ground, right? And uh, they do share entrances, they can share. So they're not what you call a colony, where they all huddle together like uh, the honeybee, but they may use a hole in the ground that's the same, and then it separates and branches off into their own private chambers. Listen to this story. Last summer, the author of this article, he's saying last summer, sweat and carter bees landed on my arm while I was in the woods. I was not alarmed, but there is a common misconception that all bees are aggressive and sting. If a bee stings, it is likely doing so in defense of its hive or colony. Since most of our native bees are solitary, there is nothing to defend. Furthermore, only females can sting. The stinger is historically thought to have been an apparatus for laying eggs. Let me skip down. In countless attempts to take decent pictures, I've been extremely close to many species of bees and have not been stung yet. So. What he's saying is, don't fear that they, they're landing on your arm because they're attracted to the sweat. They don't really want to get you. And he's not been stung if you just let them alone. Or put a stick by them, they'll probably fly on, the, or crawl on the stick and then let them go away. But be calm and be still as a statue, honestly. You'll be fine. So just wanted to show you this and also show you this back here building a bee hotel. Look, you see that there? Now I know that you've probably seen in museum exhibits this glass with honeybees coming and going behind it. Maybe you've seen that before. But where's the queen? Hmm? You wonder as you investigate each cell. Well, not all bees live in colonies, like I said before. In fact, roughly a third of the bees native to North Carolina are solitary. Cavity nesting bees, meaning they live alone, not with a large group. Several of these species are described in the accompanying article and share the trait of female bees occupying a small nest in anything from a hollow plant stem to an abandoned hole left by a wood burrowing beetle. This is where the female bee nurtures her eggs in a series of individual cells. And these solitary bees face increasing challenges in urban areas, including loss of habitat due to development and manicured lawns. One way to help combat this issue is by building bee hotels for them to make their cells in. And their single occup occupancy dwellings for solitary bees that come in all shapes and sizes. And there's a few examples of some. You could build one. There are kits that you can buy two of them. And uh, you can go to the website here, erwinlabweebly.com or pollinators.com. 
msu.edu. You can also go to the North Carolina Native Plant Society, and there's a list of local growers on their website about uh, bees and plants. Here's a bumblebee. And here is a long-horned bee. Notice the long horn where he gets his name. So hope you found this article helpful and got a glimpse into different kinds of bees. Sunflower bee, sweat bee, cuckoo bee, carpenter bee. Probably seen them digging holes in the wood construction. You know, originally they, they found old wood in the woods to build or to make their home in. But now, since man's creeped into their area building houses, they found porches and other places that were just couldn't resist occupancy. Bumblebee, leaf cutter bee. Anyway, there are many kinds of bees that we want to protect and protect their habitat so that we will have all of these species that pollinate not just flowers, but our food and our gardens. And uh, the sand hills is a region where a lot of them are because of particularly the ones such as mining bees that burrow in the ground. They like the sandy soil to do so. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you take care and remember learn something new every day.